Hey guys, uh, how's everything going on? So I hope you guys are liking my uh, uploads. And uh, today we're gonna continue with the uh, piston engines uh, cooling system, really. And uh, and a big announcement on the way is uh, from now on uh, my videos are going to have a short quiz at the end of the video, so that you guys can assess yourself uh, how you're doing, how you're able to understand what I'm teaching. So I hope that will really help. And uh, that's all. Yes, let's get started with the cooling system. Uh, today's uh, video will be relatively uh, very um, easy to understand. There's not not much uh, you know you have to concentrate on. Just just a careful listen once is enough. So cooling system of a piston engine uh, is generally divided into two parts. That is internal and one is external. Okay, so in that also we have uh, subtypes. Uh, what type is here internal? It is oil cooled external it can be air it can be liquid okay so now uh, what happens is uh, why do we need cooling so we need cooling of course because uh, piston engine uh, develops a lot of uh, high temperature because of the friction that is generated inside a piston cylinder so unless it is cooled it can really uh, result to a serious damage to the engine so why do we need cooling system to avoid serious damage serious damage to the engine to avoid this serious damage we need cooling system okay so the cooling can be done through uh, externally by air cooling here and uh, fins and liquid cooling as well liquid cooling is generally circulating liquid around the cylinder and internal cooling this is done by lubricating oils lubricating oils uh, uh, we have a separate chapter on lubrication so that will be dealt in uh, depth there in that chapter which will be the next video of course so let's uh, discuss a little about external cooling system so radial and low power inline engines are generally air cooled high power inline engines have small frontal area and therefore they are liquid cooled because they don't have much area for air to flow in and therefore they have therefore they are liquid co cooled okay how is liquid cooling done it is liquid cooling is done by is done by circulating water this is important water mixed water with mixed with ethylene glycol so this is this is the coolant okay and this is circulated around circulated around the cylinders of the engine okay next now there's something called as fins okay that they, they are triangular strips like this attached to the uh, piston uh, cylinder so these fins in air 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 cooled air cooling where uh, air cooling is done it is air is circulated air circulated around the fins now what fins do is they increase the area surface area so they dissipate heat and since air that is coming in is obviously cooler so the surface area exchanges heat exchange happens and the cylinder uh, and the piston engine is cooled okay so that's something about external cooling system let's discuss internal cooling system okay so internal cooling system as you can see here it's oil cooled right so internal cooling system is by circulating lubricating 
ऑयल इनसाइड द सिलेंडर दैट दैट इज द बेसिक ऑफ इट एंड आई जस्ट गिव यू द प्रॉपर्टीज दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड ओके सो लेट्स so the following there should be following properties should provide cooling sealing lubrication and flashing flashing in this i mean is the flashing of sediments okay sediments should be taken away now the properties of a engine lubricating oil are engine lubricating oil are a should have high flash point and low pour point basically it shouldn't solidify okay and it should just just flash at uh, temperatures that are uh, it should be high flash point so that it doesn't uh, catch fire easily and a low pour point that it doesn't solidify the oil should have low carbon content and wax content should be low good oxidation stability now how is that uh, achieved is uh, you add detergents to the engine oil to improve cleanliness and uh, anti corrosion etc so that gives a good stability to the oxidation you obviously need oxidation only then you're going to burn the fuel so burn burn the fuel so if you have a very high uh, low oxidation rate then it might lead to um, bad combustion of the fuel because oil is there as well so in this case what happens is uh, we need uh, we need to add detergents are added to the engine oil to improve cleanliness and anti corrosion properties okay now there is something called as grade of oil now grade of oil uh, is decided uh, by uh, a number uh, designated as sae this is by basically society of society of auto motive engineers so these guys are the it's a council kind of international council which uh, decide you know the grading of a particular oil so each aircraft each engine have a specific uh, requirement of this sae uh, grade so that's how we decided so in summers what happens is temperatures are high therefore oil with high sae grade high sae number is used that is because it is thicker and denser thicker and denser in winter it's the opposite temperatures are lower oil with low sae number is used okay now there are also there are when when you have a a, a country where uh, it is it's not going to extreme winter and extreme summer which is moderate there is something called as synthetic synthetic syn oops i got it wrong synthetic synthetic multi viscosity oils and these are used through different seasons don't need a change specifically okay different seasons now uh, one important thing about oil is uh, shouldn't mix shouldn't mix oil of different grades okay because that was uh, just because if the uh, you know that oil is not available you cannot just mix uh, different grades of oil because that will cause uh, damage to the engine because it's all specifically made now if uh, what happens if your uh, you know you, if you, if the heat energy that is generated by the combustion is not controlled so i'll just write down the point basically if heat 
generated is not controlled in the engine a breakdown why 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 does uh, this happen is if the if the oil breakdown of oil lubricating ability so uh, the heat generated is not controlled why this happens is this can happen because of because of breakdown of oil lubricating ability structural failure of some engine component pre ignition and th fourth one is detonation so it could be any of these four reasons that your uh, heat generator is not heat generated due to the uh, because of the engine is not being able to control now there's some concept called as overcooling interesting right so overcooling is what happens is if your engine temperature is low engine temperature is low then the bhp will also decrease to the propeller to the prop so the bhp available to the propeller also decreases which is not uh, very uh, the thing that we actually need to happen so we need a good so overcooling will cause your engine temperature to go down and bhp will to go down as well now the ability of the liquid fuel to change its state from liquid to vapor is reduced in a cold engine this is the major drawback so your engine uh, your fuel that is there in liquid form will not be able to make it to vapor form in a cold engine so this low temperature results in high vapor pressure so this is one causes an overall damage to the engine all right now uh, there is something called as uh, cht cht or ch basically cht gauge we is what we is discussing about it's called cylinder head temperature okay so now uh, we need to know how uh, how the engine is doing right the temperature we need to know the temperature so now cylinder head temperature gauge is a gauge installed in the cockpit so the pilot can monitor the temperature using this gauge now what how how this works is there is a cht sensor fitted to cylinder head okay so now the cylinder head sensor this sensor is uh, generally the thermocouple that is uh, there and uh, this sensor is fitted to the cylinder head so this sends back signal to the cockpit instrument now this important point to note is if there is only one sensor it will be attached to the hottest cylinder okay this is very important hottest cylinder so uh, because uh, if there is depends on the aircraft type there may be only uh, one cylinder uh, that is at uh, the cst gauge is uh, attached to and that will be to the hottest cylinder now as i told you this is a, the sensor is thermocouple the sensor here is a thermocouple okay so it, the principle of the thermocouple is basically it senses uh, the temperature and produces a voltage that is proportional to the temperature and shows it into the instrument so that's how a thermocouple works so you don't really have to go in much detail but you can just google up uh, what exactly how thermocouple works the, the last uh, important point, point in this is the cockpit indication is a sensitive moving coil meter this is called galveno meter so this thermocouple and galvo mean galveno meter together uh, you know help us understand the cht temperature all right so now uh, that's all i think yeah so that's all about uh, cooling system it's it's fairly simple this uh, video that i made um, 
so yeah uh, you could now uh, actually take the short quiz that I've uh, decided uh, it will be available uh, in the description as well as on the video I'm sure and um, that's all then uh, and if you like the video do share it and like it of course subscribe to the channel and uh, like the page on Facebook as well share it with your friends and uh, spread the word have a good day guys take care see you on the Tuesday